Well, the space van is dead yet again. This time, it won't even make it back into my shop on its own power. And in this video, you are gonna see what can only be described as a roller coaster of emotion. I go from hope and happiness to defeat and destruction and literally destroyed parts. There's some pretty decent carnage in this one. And I get stranded yet again in one of my projects. And it all started with simply trying to get this gas engine to run. And I want you guys to pay attention throughout this video on how we go from happy Alex to sad Alex in a matter of, well, about 40 minutes for you guys. Enjoy the show and consider maybe not buying a concept vehicle for yourself as they can be a royal pain in the butt. All right, before we get involved in trying to get this gas engine to kick on, we need to do something that I should have done a long time ago, and that's copy the hard drive from this computer because we found out that this guy right here, this runs the whole Spaceman show. So originally I thought, this computer was just to control the screen in there and uh, it didn't actually control the van at all. But we learned in the last video that that is not the case when I tried to switch over to gas mode in the screen, it just like shut the whole thing down because I think it was trying to switch to gas mode, which is something else we have to figure out in this video. But for now, I need to copy the hard drive in this old computer. A lot of you guys had mentioned this in the comments section. And basically, if we lose that information, it's gonna be gone forever. We're not gonna find a backup of this program. I can't find anyone that's worked for Bright outside of one engineer, and he doesn't have a copy. So the team that wrote all of this code is just not around anymore. And so if we lose this, we're done. The van is like totally dead in the water. So anyway. That's all it takes to remove this. We need to take it apart now. So what we want to get at is this hard drive right here. And then this doesn't just slide right out. We have to take apart a little bit more. So this face plate with the fans can pull back and then we can slide this. There we are. There's our board, a few more screws. Okay, so let's go ahead and disconnect this and be an extra careful. There we go. So I bought this off Amazon, but what we have here is a tool that will read the drive and it hooks up via USB to a laptop. And this is gonna be our new drive. So this is a 32 gig where this one's only a 16. Like I said, many of you guys had mentioned to do this, but I think there was a little confusion. I think that people thought this was a very, very old hard drive. I mean, it is, but a lot of people thought that it had a spinning disc inside uh, and their concern was vibration and that it could be physically damaged and then all the memory will be lost. That is not the case. This does not have any moving parts, but it is a very old flash drive. It's very, very slow. So we're definitely making a massive upgrade here and then we'll have two copies just in case and it should be faster. First step, image this disc. It's going in the space van hard drive content. So, okay, and I'll hit finish. All right, current progress 0%. This might take a while. Well, this is surprising. We're only about a minute in and it says we have about a minute left. That is really fast. This guy's flashing away, doing some work and we are almost done. It probably just went so fast because there's not a whole lot on it. Woohoo! yay. Image completed successfully in two minutes and 35 seconds. Thank you. It tells you that because it's proud. I plugged a new drive in. So we're only copying 2.7 gigs. We'll go finish. This is just gonna tell us it's gonna write over the drive, which is empty anyway. There we go, she's cruising. All right, four minutes, 31 seconds is what it took. We are done, 100%. All right, we're going out with the old AFD3 in with the Yansun. I, I don't know what that means. Anyone out there? What is that? I gotta be super, super careful with these pins. There we go, more power. I wonder if the van will be faster now. This will be faster. Does that count? And I'll reinstall our screws to the bottom. Let the screws install. We can slide this whole thing back inside and then reinstall our two fans. And then what you want to do is use your 3 8 impact that can deliver for like a couple hundred foot pounds of torque. That way you know you're holding your little face plane on right. Just kidding, just kidding, be gentle. That's that, this will keep in the space van, it's still good. And we weren't running like a huge risk with this in the space van, like this this would have been fine, but this is better. All right, then we're going back into the van. I'm so excited to see if the screen is any faster. Oh, it's solid. I've plugged everything back in, now let's connect power. There we go. Now when I plug the car in to charge it, it turns that computer on and the screen, so let's give it some charge. Ooh, there she goes, working away. All right, it's doing its thing in here. Disk boot failure, insert system disk, press enter. 
There we go. I'm hoping we just have to do that for the first time that it's booting up, but then again, it wouldn't be that weird for the space fan to have a keyboard with it at all times. Looks like there's some settings that need to be changed, like which devices to boot up first. So we just change that over to hard disk. And we'll go ahead and save this. Well, let's see what happens now. Oh, I heard a beep. There we go. Yay, we're back. We're back. Eco drive. All right, let's see what we're looking at for energy. I haven't plugged this in for a while. 76% state of charge. All right, that's pretty good. It won't take us that much longer to charge it back up to 100% state of charge before we go out on the road and test it. So right now, we got to figure out why this gas engine won't kick on. Now, normally you'd need to wait for the state of charge to go low in order for it to kick on, but we can force the engine on this way, or at least we're supposed to be able to. And yeah, nothing happens. I did this on our last test drive while it was driving in EV mode and it totally shut the whole van down. So it does seem like it's switching over but it's not actually starting so we have to get into super diagnosis mode on this 1.8 liter caliber engine but first even though the space van looks really really good we are going to make it look even better by ceramic coating it with the diy armor shield 9 ceramic coating kit from avalon king i've been using this for years on all of my cars and right now they are doing a crazy black friday sale so normally a complete kit is 75 dollars and for a very limited time and quantity you're gonna get three kits for 99 dollars this is the best deal of the year by far and you can coat an entire car with just one kit if you have a larger suv or truck you'll need two and these make excellent gifts as well so get three for 99 and give one away for christmas ceramic coating does many things like protect your car from the elements so you can think of this as an invisible shield over your entire car it also makes any surface hydrophobic so water and dirt roll right off keeping your car cleaner in between washes and it'll give your paint a deep glossy shine now the armor shield 9 kit makes everything easy it all comes in the kit so they give you one of these applicators and a pad that it wraps around you're just going to prime this and then wipe it on i like to go in different directions like so and then wait 60 seconds and wipe it off so 60 seconds later and now we are simply going to buff off any excess that is it if you guys have ever waxed a car and wax gets everywhere all those little dots on all of your trim and everything like that it is really annoying it only lasts for a couple of months but if you guys could do that you can easily ceramic coat your car i can do a normal size vehicle in about i don't know hour and a half two hours it's so easy once you get going and you can bounce around all over the car so while that's drying for 60 seconds we can start restoring restoring trim and this is one of the best trim restoration products on the market don't waste any money buying a separate product i've restored the trim on all my cars and it makes them look so much younger so much newer look at this the space band's brand new now so definitely take advantage of this insane deal it's the best one of the year and last year when i mentioned their black friday special everything sold out within a few days so this is very limited time and quantity but this time around you guys my viewers have early access this is going to get released to the general public in a few days from now. You guys can share the link with your friends and family and you don't have to enter a coupon code or anything. Just use the special link down below. And with that, I'm going to continue to ceramic coat my space van so that that is drying while we're trying to diagnose why my four cylinder Dodge caliber engine won't run. Okay, now that we're done and the space fan is looking pretty, we need to figure this out. So this engine did start in the very first space van video. Here is proof. And then we're putting it in. <laughs> We're putting it in drive. <laughs> <laughs> it started. But I was never able to get it started ever again. I didn't really care much because I was mostly focused on the high voltage battery system. But now that that is working and this does drive in EV mode, we need that gas engine to kick in, drive the front wheels of the van to keep us going further. So this setup is kind of similar to a Chevy Volt in that it'll run in pure EV mode. For around 20 to 30 miles, these batteries are a little bit degraded. So we'll, we'll see how far we can go. But when it runs out of juice, the gas engine kicks in drives the front wheels and you can just drive all day long until you can charge it again. So the idea was that this could get 100 miles per gallon in the city. And so that rating wasn't calculated based on driving this thing through an entire tank of fuel. It was based on the average city mileage of delivery vans, which I think was about like 40 or 50 miles, something like that. So if you combine the EV range and the gas range for the day, it would get about 100 MPG. All right, so what I wanna do is figure out if the starter is getting a signal to start when it's supposed to. Now the starter on 
this engine is underneath the intake, but we should have an engine wiring harness section that we can get to somewhere behind this really nice custom made cold air intake. All right, so I found what I was looking for. This yellow wire right here is our S terminal at the back of the starter. I can't get a camera in all the way, but I can, I can see where it's going. That's the S terminal. So that should get a signal to start when we hit the engine icon there in our little command screen. All right, so I'm gonna hook up the voltmeter to the back here of the starter where that yellow wire goes to. So I have made a little incision on that wire because it is very difficult to get to the actual back of the starter. And I'm hooking up my power lead to that. Now we're gonna click on the engine with the screen. Go ahead. All right, and yeah, we're getting no voltage whatsoever. Okay, so we definitely have a signal issue. I wouldn't imagine the starter would be bad yet. I think this is a very low mileage engine, but before we go any further, let's just give power to that S terminal. See if this thing cranks. I'm curious. All right, power probe has power. All right, before I do this, I'm gonna make sure this car is in park. I, I really don't trust this. Cause if I bump that starter and it is in gear, I'm gonna get run over. So hang on, I'm gonna be like a thousand percent sure here and do this a while. I sit on the engine. So then at least if it takes off towards that brick wall right there, I'll just be able to stop it. Right? There we go, here we go. Oh, hey, it didn't move me. All right, starter's good, engine spins fine. I mean, it ran beautifully when I got it running, you know, a few months ago at this point. But yeah, it's, it's not gonna see any signal from the engine computer or anything like that because the van is not commanding it to start. But at least at this point, we've ruled out the starter or the engine and we can keep on going with diagnosis. We will figure you out, space van. Who do you think you are? A concept vehicle with like no schematics or information at all? <laughs> All right, now the space van has a lot of unknowns, you know, like this gigantic harness that's not plugged in. It's got quite a few circuit breakers. I'm just gonna go around and reset these. These connections look good. And in the last episode, I did clean up this ground because it was in pretty poor shape, but that should be fine now. And then we have another one right here. What is this? Oh, this, oh, this is a big power wire right here, I believe, going to the starter. This looks like an airbag impact sensor just kind of chilling right here. That's not doing anything. There's no real airbags on this car. And what is this? Is this an ambient air temperature sensor? Yeah, this looks like an ambient air temperature sensor. It's plugged in, it's just kind of chilling right here. So that's good. This fuse right here is good. And here we go. Wow, this thing is like triple fuse. There's one here as well. I'm really freaked out that fuses would blow, I guess. We have two 15 amperes, they are good. And let's check this one out here. It's 25, that is also good. What is this one? Look at how chewed up this one is. Look at the cap. Looks like an animal went at this guy, but that's good too. Another fuse behind the battery, 15 amp. Was that blown? Hold on a second. Could have a blown fuse. That'd be great. Come on now. Any kind of smoking gun that will reveal itself on the van is always good because there really isn't any documentation for anything at all. Ooh, this is exciting, guys. That fuse is blown. Don't know what it does, but it's blown. Let's replace it. All right, new 15 amp fuse is going in. It didn't immediately blow. And I'm just tracing this back. It goes directly to the battery and then inside of the car. All right, so it goes in here somewhere. And this tag's got some writing on it. What does it say? Main connection. Cool. Okay, here's uh, insulation that they used. Very nice. Oh, look at this. You can see where the floor was welded to the firewall. There we go. Um, found some more ground connections. What is this? This just says ground. Okay. More weld. Excellent. Oh, look at this. Is this the VIN? I don't know what this is. I mean, that's not like a real VIN, but they put something here. What is this? Does anyone know what that is? Is that some kind of method of keeping track of equipment or something? I mean, it looks looks like a VIN. Anyway, uh, what does this one say? Main connector, okay, again. All right, there it is. Yep, it's this guy right here. It seems to eventually lead up to this relay right here. Unfortunately, I have no idea where this goes. Nothing's labeled. At this point, I'm just gonna turn the key on and, and see if the gas engine kicks on. We'll see if that had anything at all to do with our issue. Why do I feel like we're never gonna know what that fuse does? Only one way to find out. Okay, let's see. All right, let's try kicking engine on. And nothing. Great. And I can hear something clicking when I do this inside the car. Listen. You hear that? The space van wants to click on that gas engine. Why isn't it? I'm gonna put this carpet back, but you know, I like to put legit streetcar stickers in weird places. There we go. Made my mark. Reinstall our floor mat, whatever we call this. Can I like make this look better by just going like that? Look at that, cover up all the wiring. There we go. That looks so much better. 
stay. Now in this slew of wiring disaster is an OBD2 connector. That's how I figured out where the engine came from. We checked it for codes long, long ago. So let's look for codes now, see if anything new has popped up and hopefully that can point us in the right direction of what is going on here. Let's scan everything. And yeah, we don't have that many modules. Come on now. DTC is 30? Really? All right, um, let's see. We have an implausible data received from the TCM transmission control unit, stored active fuel level sensor. I'm sure none of that stuff is hooked up to the engine's computer. We had a lot of this stuff back when I had this thing running. Let's see, TCM calibration not learned. It wasn't communicating with the transmission control unit before, so I'm not too concerned about that. I mean, if this was a normal car, I'd be very concerned about that, but it's it's not normal. All right, I wanna check out some body control units here. So what I'm looking for right now is to see if there's an issue with how the car is communicating with the ignition system. So right now we're checking out live data for the ignition system, and you can see here we have 13.6 volts, ECU, normal mode and what i'm looking for to see if this thing recognizes that the key's in there there we go uh valid key in ignition no there is a key in the ignition number of key fobs program two i only have one. Oh, we're getting some there all right well that's really the important part oh this is funny it's reading tire pressure i don't believe that at all uh what's important here is this word no we need that to say yes because right now the space fan doesn't know that this key is in the ignition i mean when we turn it things light up and stuff like that but it's not sending a signal that will eventually go to the engine's computer to allow us to start but why was it doing it when i first got it i don't know this did work at one point all right my next step is to put a mask on why would you need a mask to work on the space van especially in the interior well let me show you yeah, if you guys remember the space van has a lot of just normal insulation like stuff you'd get at the hardware store to insulate your home see this stuff right here. And what I wanna try and find is called a win module. So Chrysler's use a win module. It's a wireless ignition node, and that basically completes the communication between the key and the engine computer at the end of the day. It all has to go through this module. So it's gotta have one. I am thinking it's somewhere around the ignition, maybe. I mean, it's a module, it could be anywhere. Let's discover. All right, so welcome to behind the dashboard of the space fan. It's very intimidating. No one has any idea what's going on in here, but we're looking for a control unit. Unit. Where are you, control unit? Where? Without a bunch of disassembly, it's very difficult to show you guys where this module is, but it's above that brace. And more importantly, I found some wiring that comes from the wind module through the firewall and into our engine compartment. So we gotta figure out which ones these are. So it seems like most of the wiring action on the space van is in this area here. This is our big fuse and relay box. And then we have this mess right here. And actually, Hold on, we had green and we had blue down there. So this is our little remote start door lock module. This is comes on like older cars from the 90s and 2000s. So this can control a key fob. See, look at that, keyless entry. And this also has a little button here and an LED light. You guys have probably seen this before. So this just kind of lives right over here. And that actually has these. I wonder if these are the same. So it looks like for this module, it only has four wires that are actually being used. You can see most of this harness goes nowhere. Um, it has power and ground right here. That's really easy to trace back. It just goes to the battery. And then it just has these two wires, which seem to be coming off of the wind module, which has to do with ignition. So I'm gonna check continuity and see if those are the same wires. These are the wires that we're gonna check for continuity. These go to the wind module. We'll make a small incision into the installation here. So just a little guy like that. Now we can connect our meter. All right, so with it connected under the hood, uh, I'm gonna touch it right now. Oh, hold on. There we go. We have continuity. Cool. All right, that's really good news. We have a wire going from our ignition module to that random remote start box, that module, that that could be intercepting the signal. And that thing could just simply be bad. Those are really cheap too. You can get those off like Amazon and stuff like that for like 50 bucks. All right, so I've already unplugged this here. And then this I think is the remote wire. And does any of this go to anything else? No, nothing. This whole thing is not being utilized. That's, that's not that weird. Um, let's see though what we can see on the inside. Oh, ew. Well, it passed quality control, but I'm assuming that was before it had this, yeah. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh no, this got corroded. That is cool, I like that. Yeah, there's some corrosion on this side of the circuit board as well, and that could be interrupting our contact. We've definitely had our fair share of corroded control units on this channel, if you guys remember the Alpina B7 with its trunk full of water, and I was able to fix most of those. I think out of the 15 modules, I needed only only replaced two of them after cleaning and they were, some of them were worse than this. So, okay, that's nice. Let's remove this from the car. So there's our power wire. Oh, okay. 
Just pulling out the connectors here, it's a little scary. Okay, we'll leave those two in. Let's do what we did on the Alpina. Let's clean this. What we're gonna be using here is electronic contact cleaner. So don't just go get some brake cleaner, carbon show cleaner and go to town. This is specific so it won't destroy the circuit board. And we're just gonna start off with a nice cleaning. Now, I wanna be really gentle here. Remove the corrosion, but not remove any of the solder joints or anything like that. You can see this board is already kind of flaky. Yeah, we're gonna remove some of this, it's inevitable. I am inevitable. Now on the Alpina, I was being very, very careful because some of those modules are really expensive. This I'm gonna be careful with too, but only because I'm dying to know if this actually works, but if, if we ruin it or if it's just too far gone already, it's not the end of the world. I'm sure we can find the same module on the internet. This side has already cleaned up well. It wasn't that bad. These pens have seen better days. Going around with a tiny pick to areas like this just to get this corrosion off. All right, one final cleaning here, and then we'll let it dry. That's about as good as this is coming. This side looks really nice. We'll let this fully air dry, and then we'll plug it in and see what happens. She's all dried up. Let's plug it in, plug it in, plug it in. All right, we're getting clicks. Okay, with our cleaned up module, let's put our caps back on. And now we're gonna plug this in. All right. That could be it. That could be intercepting our signal and causing the key fob essentially not to read. So if that's the case, we don't even have to try starting this thing yet. Let's just go back to the laptop. All right, Chrysler key going into Chrysler ignition, hopefully communicating with Chrysler wind module. Oh, look at that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, that's what we wanted to see. <laughs> Nice. All right, cool. Well, hey, we already fired it up. Let's uh, let's put it in gas mode and see if the engine starts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, foot is on the brake. Still says yes, this should work. And of course it doesn't work. How is that possible? Work. Let's go back to hybrid. Man, this stinks. Wait a minute. Oh no, that's no key fob for it being depressed. Yeah, this said no before. Hold on, you know what, let me try something. So before to get this gas engine to start, we would just put it in the drive and let me try putting it in engine mode. Okay, hang on, let's try this again. So now it's in engine mode. No. This is the story of my space van life, people. You think you find a smoking gun and it still doesn't work. I mean, it is possible though that that module is bad, but no, no, it said no before. Now it's making a connection and saying yes. Say yes to starting. All right, you know what I wanna do? I am going to unplug everything on this van for a few minutes and see if it resets anything. In that first video when we got this thing to run, I had to do that a few times because we got stranded in the parking lot there. All right, power's going back on now. We're getting our clickies. All right, so I hit that red button before and maybe that is a kill switch. Check this out. Something I noticed is that when we command the engine to start, this relay like never stops clicking. That's weird. Let's replace or jump that relay out of the way. Not a fan of this clicking relay. It's been many months, but I think I would have remembered if this was clicking last time we had the gas engine on. I'm not sure. Curious what this relay looks like. I mean, it looks okay in here. Let's jump it anyway. All right, we're gonna jump 30 and 87. Okay, nothing bad happened yet. All right, here we go. Nothing. Well, that didn't work as far as jumping it. Okay, now that we're getting that ignition signal, I wanna see if we command the engine on like so, and then we power probe the starter. Will it run now? It wants to run. Hmm. Come on, baby. So weird, it's kicking off like it's getting a fuel pressure prime. Oh, there we go. Okay. Engine's running. It's a step in the right direction. So now it's seeing the key and it's starting, but we have to manually feed it power. So what in the world is going on here? I wanna make sure that the alternator is charging. 15, all right, nice, I like it. So that's good. Ooh, let's see the screen with the engine running. It is showing the fuel is running the engine, which is sending power to the wheels, which it's not actually doing right now, but oh, let's see. All right, we're in drive. Oh yeah, it moves. And it's just running off the front wheel drive engine and transmission right now. It's not showing any power flow to the rear. Okay. You, you can kind of tell it feels that way too. Like an EV mode, it, it feels like an EV. This feels like a normal gas car. And can I rev it? Not really. Now when I'm standing still, but it does respond to throttle when it's in gear. Okay. All right. Why? Why isn't it getting a command to the starter on its own? All right, let's try switching over to EV mode only. And it shuts the engine off, that's right. And now, 
technically it should start right there and it doesn't. But we have relay clicking right in here. We gotta investigate that. It only clicks when I put it into engine mode as if it's trying to command. Command! All right, first things first, let's just replace the relay. See what happens, it's clicking. All right, so we'll just pop this relay in now and we'll just see what happens. This could be it, people. This could be it. Come to life, Chrysler engine. Come to life. All right, guys, I have spent all day trying to figure out why this gas engine doesn't start when I click the button in the screen to get it to start. And the frustrating part is I don't even know if this ever worked or or how this system works at all. I've just been obsessed with, with getting it to work because it, it's there for a reason, right? I don't know, I'm just defeated at this point. I mean, just look at, I have been all all up in here with my voltmeter, just checking, discovering, trying to figure out the space van with no schematics. And I'm just like, I'm killing myself. And I think for no reason, I was able to get the gas engine to start and run by force feeding it power. For all I know, the people at Bright had rigged something up at the time just for it to run when they needed to show people the van because this was like in front of Congress and stuff like that. So I did some rigging. You guys know how this thing was put together with stuff like this, 50 million connectors on the battery. I mean, heck, some of the stuff, they didn't even use a connector. They just wrapped bolts around wires like so. So I'm getting in on this party. I added my own power wire to the battery just like they did. And I've rigged it up into a toggle switch, a temporary toggle switch, because I'm gonna get a really cool push button start, but check this out. It runs, it runs guys, with my little toggle. I am done trying to figure out if there is some module or relay or computer on this car that has been wired in like everything else that's not working. I'm, I just, I did it myself. All right, now I'm a bright idea engineer. So I ordered a really cool push button that I'm gonna install nicely in this video. But first, I wanna go for a ride on EV power, see how far we go and see if when the state of charge gets low, if we click on engine now that we fix the ignition issue, if it kicks on, that, that might just be it, I don't know. It's the next day, it was raining yesterday and I don't drive my space van in the rain. So new day, I'm rejuvenated and check out our new push button starting switch. So we're gonna go ahead and install this and I think I found a good spot. So we have a fake cigarette lighter here. So we're gonna get rid of it and I think this will be the same size roughly, yes. So we have to screw this nut on and hook up the wiring here. I think in order to not have to take all of this apart, we can take this panel off. You can see it's got a nice little gap anyway. And let's see, yeah, okay, it just pulls off, great. All right, cool. So this was all custom built. Whoa, what is this? What in the world, we got this and what? Dude, get out of here. I did not see this when I had all this apart. Dining car e-stop. What? What is this? And then it's got a connector that's jumped or something? Emergency stop, what? I mean, how do you not press a big red button? I'm just, ah, didn't do anything. All right, hang on, what does this actually do? Does this have anything to do with the fact that our gas engine doesn't kick on? I don't know, there's only one way to find out. All right, I'm gonna get this thing all booted up and then we're gonna e-stop it. And why would they even have the e-stop here? You have to remove a panel to get to it. That makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, and there's also some USB action going on here. Yeah, I don't know. Does this maybe cut off power to the motor? I'm not sure, but we're gonna find out. All right, let's just first go on to engine mode. Oh, I definitely did something. Yeah, I definitely heard a drop there in battery power. All right, I'm gonna put this in drive. Well, no, it won't move at all. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. I just e-stopped it. All right, let's give this a key cycle. Get us back online. Let's see if it'll work. There we go. Okay, so the van works in EV mode like, like it always does. Very reliable. There we go, e-stop. It just shuts off electric power. I mean, cool, I guess, but like they got it in a, a really bad spot. I think I'm gonna run this out into the floor area. It doesn't look like it was ever mounted, but the original concept vehicle had this e-stop out here somewhere. So they probably hit it for when they were showing and trying to sell the van. Who wants to see a gigantic red emergency stop button in their car? We're moving on. We have our own buttons to install that look much prettier. All right, let's disconnect one of my old nitrous switches. Cut these ends off. Wire strip times two. Then we have our crimper. There we go, perfect. We're good. All right, now we'll attach our terminals like so. Now let's give it a quick test. We're good, we're good. All right, let's get this thing installed. This thing's put together very well. All right. Feed our wires through. All right, switch going into its new home. All right, start switches in. So 
the worst. A sequence of karate chops is what it takes to reinstall this panel. This looks sweet. All right, we are ready to go on our maiden voyage to see how far we can go in the space van with the gas engine now. So we'll be in EV mode until it runs out, then gas engine mode. And I gotta get the e-stop button out front and center. This was designed by Bright to have a function to shut off all of the high voltage power and it should be on the open. This is how they would have been driving around when they were testing it. We have a mouse and a keyboard. And if they were going on solo trips, they probably, had a setup like this. So cool. This is a great idea. I mean, a bright idea. <laughs> oh, and we can't forget about this switch panel that we found in one of the first videos. Leaving that out as well, it just kind of dangles here. That's where they wanted it. And if we run into any issues, we can log it into their trouble log, which doesn't have any logs in it because this thing is just so reliable and yeah, trouble free, nothing in here. I should start logging this. Oh, and we have our Indiana license plate that is way expired. And there wasn't anything in here except for this stuff. It basically tells you how to do stuff, like remove the passenger office seat. I don't know what that is. Oh, and then here's their one log. Engine fault, road test, no fault found. 0.5 hours by whoever that is in 2009. And then how to remove the driver's seat. And then some more instructions. So yeah, that's all we got. That's all the paperwork. We're gonna keep track of the mileage on this drive in the fancy van. I call it the space van though. And we're just gonna treat this like a daily driver. I'm gonna go pick up parts. I got a C4 Corvette target top we gotta get. We might go pick up some AMS oil. Who knows what else? We're at 100% state of charge and we'll leave it in hybrid mode. There we go. The amazing backup camera, look at that. <laughs> here we go, here we go. Just driving my space van daily. <laughs> I'm so nervous. It's gonna leave me stranded, probably. Maybe, I don't know. We fix everything, right? Right? All right, here we go, people, we're cruising. Uh, we're gonna swing by the bank, pick up 500 bucks cash. That's what I'm buying this C4 Target top for. Uh, and then we're meeting in the parking lot of a Hobby Lobby. So funny, the guy's like, I'm gonna be in a black 335XI with dark tinted windows. And he's like, what are you gonna be in? And uh, I didn't know what to say. So I just said a silver delivery van with chrome wheels. And then I said, you'll know when you see it. <laughs> he'll know, he'll know. All right guys, we're approaching two and a half miles in the space van. We're good. We just hit four miles. And guys, you don't know how nervous I am right now. The last time when we drove it around, I just kind of kept on going around my shop, like right in the neighborhood. We are just straight up four miles away. Like if this breaks down, it's not gonna be good at all. Almost at the bank and uh, that's about how far the A-pillar will go before it pops out. This one has no clips. There we go. Hey, look, it's a Rivian. Hello, fellow electric utility vehicle. This is crazy, oh, okay. I wonder if the Rivian's got one of these. There we go. <laughs> what are we at? All right, we're past five miles, people. Woo! Cash money. Got my 500 bucks. Let's go meet this dude at Hobby Lobby for a Target top. Just continuing on the day, just like a normal vehicle in the space van. The bright idea. Let's see, will it make it through here? I hope so. Are we gonna make it? Kinda. That makes it through the drive-through. I, I went in and got cash and then I just had to go around. Okay. Normal vehicle. Oh no, guys. We just had a horrible like axle noise. Oh no. And then it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it doesn't move. Oh man, that's not good. Oh, the axle must have let loose. Oh no, this is the worst spot ever. Oh shoot, I gotta investigate. All right, we are in such a bad spot. We need the gas engine because that'll run the front wheels. This is a rear motor issue right now. Yeah, it, it, so, it sounds like the axle is just free spinning or not spinning at all. The motor's free spinning is what I mean. Man, everything was going great too. We went like almost seven miles. Come on, screen, boot up. Why? This is taking the longest it's ever taken now. Click on engine, here we go. Oh, please work. Oh, it moves again. Thank goodness for the front wheel drive gas engine right now, people. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. And this is the first time we've driven it in gas mode. Okay, and it doesn't wanna go very fast at all. Oh man, I wonder if it needs that electric motor too. I don't know what's going on, we're going like 10. It's better than nothing, I'll take 10 right now. So at least we can get over. No one's gonna let me in, no 
Okay, there we go. I don't know why I'm putting my turn signals on. They don't do anything. Oh, this stinks. This stinks, but I'm so happy we have that gas back up. We can we can limp at 10. We can get it somewhere. The target top guy is going to be mad. I'm going to be late. Sorry, target top guy. All right, we're pulling into a spot. Oh, shoot. Let's investigate. Well, the brakes are much different right now with the gas engine running. Okay. All right. Luckily, we have our engine right here. Here's our X. Okay. Oh my gosh. You gotta be kidding me. Look at what happened to the axle. It totally sheared off. What? Dude, we're putting like no power to this thing at all. Like it goes 45 miles an hour and takes off like a turtle off the line. Why would that shear off? That makes no sense. All right, I don't know. I don't know what to say. All right, C4 target top. Wait. It's very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate you meeting me here. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. Well, this guy was nice enough to drive like six miles down the road to meet me here. So at least I'm stranded, but I have a C4 Targa because it's taken me like a year to find a decent deal on one of these. Everybody wants a thousand, twelve hundred dollars. I got this for five. It looks nice. So one win of the day, I guess. My goal was to treat this like a real delivery van and like pick up parts, and we did that. All right, guys, that's wide open throttle. It's basically idle, you know, maybe like 5% throttle, something like that. So I'm seven miles away and uh, able to go maybe 10 miles an hour. And we did find a route that takes us through side streets where the speed limit's like 15-ish or whatever. So we should be fine. It's just gonna take, well, roughly about an hour-ish, something like that. All right, guys, this thing's only going about three miles per hour. Like if there's any kind of incline, it's over. I am going to try and pull the fireman safety loop just in case that will allow us to have throttle response. I don't know why we don't have any throttle response, but I don't know, guys. I know you guys have mentioned this a lot, but I'm just starting to think this was never really a real car. Nothing works. It's all hacked together. It looks pretty. I don't know. All right, so now maybe if we force gas mode, it'll give us throttle i don't know i don't know people we're back in engine mode yeah nothing it just idles that's all it does great well we got another van coming in for the rescue the chevy express sometimes you just need a 700 horsepower chevy express van to bring you to the promised land hey so we've done this before a couple two or three times i'm broken yeah it sounds about right you got some toe straps i uh Grab what I could find. All right, we're gonna toe strap it up. Yes, I do own a trailer, but the ML55 is on it and it's all strapped down. And we're like five miles away. I don't feel like going through all that mess for the trailer. So we're going old school. We're in neutral. LSC Express is hooked up. Let's do this. And luckily we still have the gas engine running and the electric power steering is working. We have power brakes. We're in good shape. Real, real good shape. All right, guys, we're almost back at the shop. We're uh, about two blocks away and everything went fine. It's all good. Defeated again by this van. I'm just disappointed. We were going so good on the EV range. We'd gone like seven miles and I think we're at like a, I don't know, 60 or 70% state of charge. So I think we would have gotten like 15 to 20 miles of range out of it, which is normal. And then the gas engine would have taken us further, but we have no throttle input. Who knows what kind of programming is done or not done with this thing? Who knows if it ever really worked? No one knows. I don't know. Maybe this is the world telling me that there's only room for one van in my life. It might just be the Procharged LSC Express. It's a great van. All right, we're here. Sweet home. Legit street quarters. I don't even know if I can make it back in the shop. Yep, didn't even make it in the shop. This is where the space van will sit until I figure out what in the world I'm doing with it. Well, everybody, I got to let you know how I'm feeling right now. And it is a mix of defeat disappointment and I'm just, I'm tired. I have put so much time into fixing this van, so much mental effort and probably hundreds of labor hours in trying to figure out how to make a concept van with no instructions, blueprints, or wiring diagrams function. And I am starting to question what function even means for this van because there's no proof that it ever really did anything on the internet. All the videos that are out on this van are on my YouTube channel outside of a couple from Bright from like 12 years ago where you see it drive but it's just briefly and you don't know how fast it's going. You don't know what mode it's in. You don't even know if it's real. And it seems like this thing is governed at 45 miles per hour. We get no throttle response when we get the gas engine to run. So I, I'm not exactly sure how this van is supposed to work. And my goal has always been to simply restore it back 
to how the Bright engineers had designed it to kind of pay homage to their efforts in building a van that achieved 100 miles per gallon. But without much information on the van, we just don't know what it did. This could have been it. This could have been the proof of concept and the point that they got before the lights turned off and the company went under. But either way, it's just been so defeating. Every time I think I've taken one step forward and I get excited that we fixed somewhere and gotten somewhere, something breaks and it's like we're taking two gigantic leaps backwards. Now, I do think I've accomplished a lot. We've rebuilt the high voltage battery. We've gotten this van to drive on EV power. We've gotten it to charge. We've gotten the gas engine to work. We've gotten the screen to work. And it just seems like I'm right there. And then the axle breaks and who knows why. I think it's rubbing a little bit, but it could be at some weird angle. We don't know if this thing was ever meant to do much more than lot drive. I, I just don't know. So I know some of you guys have mentioned, why don't you LS swap it or Tesla swap it? Guys, I want nothing to do with that. This vehicle has no VIN. It can never be legally titled. It's someone else's project. It's not anything that I would have done. So to dump that kind of time and effort into it, especially with all the other cool projects that I'm super into, doesn't make any sense. And it was never part of the original goal. I just want it to work like Bright got it to work 12 years ago. And then my ultimate goal has always been to do something charitable with the van, whether that is donating it to a school, selling it and donating the money to a school, or donating the entire van to a museum because it is a small part of EV history to the EV world. This is kind of a cool van. And I know I mostly work on gas stuff with big engines and boost and all that, but I've always kind of been into EVs as well, just like the history behind them. I think they make great daily drivers. Yeah, so to some people, this van is kind of important. But anyway, at this point, I was gonna get the original CEO on a Zoom call and I was gonna ask him for $1 million for the van, but I also said I would do that when the van is, is functional and now it's definitely not functional. It won't even make it into the shop. So I will have to fix the axle, hopefully figure out why it is that that broke and who knows what else I'll run into. But hopefully in the next video, I'm going to try and sell this to the old CEO or maybe donate it to a cool car museum. I'm just not really sure right now, but let me know in the comment section, how much money do you think this van is actually worth? I know it's one of one. There aren't really any comps, but have you guys ever seen concept vehicles that have actually sold? And I know something is only worth what someone will pay for it. I get that. People say that a lot and it makes a lot of sense in this case. But let me know what you think if you've ever seen a concept vehicle that sold. What do you think I could get for this thing? So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this craziness of the space van as it continues on. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up. Share the video with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. And most importantly, have a fantastic day. I'll see all of you in the next video. Okay. So I had an idea that they're coming in some. So considering most. So here, here are the wires. We're going to be checking continuity. This is what we're checking continuity. Son of a piss All right, now I want to be gentle. All right, so what we're going to be using here is electric con. In the space van with the gas engine kicking on. So we have our start stop feature. Ah. What word is that? Feature? I don't even know what that means.